In this video, I'm going to take you through all the steps of setting up a brand new website using the Essential Portfolio template. I've just created a new account, so if you've done the same, you should see something like this, which is your dashboard. If you haven't created your account yet, now is the time to do that if you want to follow along with the next steps. The dashboard is your starting point for all things DPG. It's what you see when you first log in and it gives you some quick links to places that you might want to go to frequently, like the upload screen or your websites. If you haven't upgraded your account yet, you'll see slightly less options on the dashboard here, but don't worry about that for now. You can follow along the instructions in this video and set up your entire site for free with just the free account. You can always upgrade your account when you need more storage or bandwidth and you can do that at any time by clicking this manage button here. The first thing you'll want to do is to upload some images into DPG. You don't have to upload everything at once, but it's really helpful to work with your own content when you're building your site, otherwise you're just looking at blank pages, which is not very much fun. So to start with, let's click the link here or in the main navigation to head over to the upload screen. Before you start uploading, it's a good idea to fill in the default metadata profile. This information can be embedded into your images, so if someone saves on from your site, they can look at the metadata and see who it belongs to at a later date. Some search engines like Google can also use metadata to show image rights information right within their image search, which makes it easier for people to track your images back to you or credit them properly. Go through and fill in as much or as little information as you like, but it's a good idea to at least add your name as the creator and a way of contacting you like your email address. Then click the update button to save that. So with that done, let's look at the rest of the upload screen. You'll be using this for all your uploading going forward, so I'll briefly take you through what each of the settings does. You add images by clicking the add button or dragging them onto this area here. We suggest always uploading high resolution images. We have a guide to preparing your images which will be linked with this video, but I'll briefly explain why we say that. When you add an image to a DPG website, we automatically create different versions from your original file to display on the website. These are optimized for the web and for different screen resolutions, which means your images always look great and load quickly. DPG does this all for you, so you don't have to worry about resizing your images for the web at all. As technologies improve, we might update the size of the versions to suit newer devices. So if you make another website from a newer template further down the line and use these same images, you'll always have the same high res in the system. Monitor resolutions are just getting larger all the time, so you want to make sure you're not limiting yourself by uploading smaller files and then having to replace them later on. The other benefit of having high res files is that you have them easily accessible if you need to download or share them on the go. If you get an inquiry about a certain image on your site, you always know where to find it in full size without digging through hard drives, which I found super useful because these inquiries only seem to come when I'm away from my computer or traveling abroad. I've used EPG on my phone to send high-res files to picture editors when I'm out and about, which is super convenient. So our advice is to upload high-resolution files that are compressed slightly if you're concerned about filling up your storage. There's more information about compression and example settings in the article. At this stage, I'm just going to upload a few images to get my site started. The Get Details from Image Metadata toggle is for images with embedded information like titles and descriptions and keywords. If you've used your editing software to include this information in preparation for upload, then toggle the switch to On and DPG will import that data. If not, you can add a title, description or keywords, which will apply to all of the uploads. You can also add or edit all of this information once the images are uploaded, so I'm going to leave this for now. The final element on this page is the set selection. Sets are a way of organizing and grouping your images together, and they work similarly to the file structure on your computer. When I create my site, a website set will appear and then a gallery page set inside that. We'll look at this more in detail later on. At the moment, because this is a brand new account, there's not much here. In the future, I'll see sets that correspond with each gallery page on my website. So when I want to add images to a website, I just need to upload or add them to the correct set, which makes it really easy to update your site. You don't have to get back into website building mode every time you want to add new content. You just come to the upload screen and choose the right set. For now, I can just see my main account set where my uploads will go for the moment. Click the upload button to start uploading. Depending on the size of the files, this can take a few minutes, so you can leave this page open and uploading while you go do something else. I'm going to let these upload and I'll come back to you once that's done. Now that my images are finished uploading, I can get started on the website. Go to the Websites tab and click Manage, and that brings you to the main websites area. This is where you make websites and where your website will be if you need to update it once you've made it. Click on the new site and websites tab and we're going to create one using the essential portfolio template. 
In TPG, a template is basically the main framework for how the site will work. The template provides the structure for what the site is able to do, and templates have different characteristics and features. Once you've made a site, you can't switch to a different template, but because you can make multiple sites in DPG, you can always start again from a different template whenever you'd like. Essential Portfolio, as the name suggests, was designed specifically with portfolios in mind. So we thought about the different ways that you might want to showcase your work and the kind of pages you might need, and all of that is what informs this specific template. You can see some working demos here made with this template by clicking the examples button and there's also a link to help. But the main thing you need to have a look at here is the configuration. These are some pre-made styles we've made for this template for you to choose from and you can change these at any time once your site is made. The theme is things like colors, fonts, sizes, padding of different elements and the preset is more about the actual layout of the gallery. This template gives you a lot of control over the way the galleries look. So we've put together some collections of settings that work well and that's the presets. You can change your mind at any time, just select which theme and preset you're most drawn to at this stage. I'm going to start with the white theme and the regular grid. If you want to follow this video along exactly, you can choose the same options or you can pick your own favourites now. You can see a preview of the different options by clicking the thumbnails here, and these will be the pages you start out with. You can always add and remove pages later on, of course. Now I click create and we'll see a helper pop up. You have the option to fill in the website title and then skip the rest, but I recommend following through the steps here because it's the simplest way to configure some of the information and add content to start with, and by the time you've done this, you'll have a working website. So I'll start by filling in a website name. This is just for your own use in DPG. It won't be seen on the web, so just choose whatever is descriptive of your project. The header is the text that shows at the top or the top left of your website, probably your name, and you can also add a tagline. You can later on add a logo to the header, but you do need to fill in the text first of all to make your site fully accessible. Next, we choose an image or a few images for the splash page. This will turn into a slideshow if you choose more than one. And then we select a few images for the gallery. These are the images we uploaded earlier. I'm just going to choose a handful to start with. Of course, you can always add more, but this helps us see what's going on with the website and the layout as soon as it's created. Next, fill in an email address for the contact page. This will forward any messages sent via the contact form and they're also available from the messages link on the dashboard, so you won't ever miss a message. You can add an image to the contact page, so I'm going to choose that too. And we're ready to build the site. If you're happy with all the information you've entered, click the build website button and that will start the build process. Depending on how many images you've added, this might take a few minutes. If you remember the versions I talked about earlier, all those versions will be created now for the images you've selected. So you can leave your computer on the screen for a few minutes, go and have a stretch, drink a glass of water. Once the build process is done, it will leave you on the website screen, so I'll come back to you once that's done for me. Once you arrive on this page, that means your website has been made and it's ready for us to look at and customise further. This is the website screen. To find your way here again, you can go to Websites and Manage from the main navigation, and you'll also see it on the dashboard. What we can do now is visit the site we've made on the web and see how far we've got. When you make your website, you get a testing URL where you can see your website exactly as it is. You don't have to publish it or anything like that. We call it a testing URL because it's not cached. So any changes you make appear immediately. But this isn't the address that you want to share with anyone. This is just for you. The testing host isn't indexed by search engines and because it's not cached, it's slower than the public host. So we don't ever want to use this as the address we give to visitors. Later on, when I've made the website perfect and I'm ready to make it public, I'll add a public host. You can use a free DPG public host, which I'll show you how to do, or you can also add your own domain if you have one already. In the meantime, let's check out our testing host by clicking visit here. This is the splash page I added some images to to make a slideshow. And if I click enter, I can see the gallery page with some images on it as well. If you click through, there's a single image view with the thumbnails, There's navigation and a contact page with an image on as well. So this is already looking pretty good. I think we've made a great start here. We have a working website. And the next part is the really fun bit. In part two, we're going to look at how we can organize the site, the different ways to display images, how the galleries work, adding new pages, everything to do with content. Then in part three, we'll dive into the design, look at the themes, all the different styling options, how to change the layout of galleries, the sizes of everything, adding logos, everything to do with the appearance of the site itself. So I'll see you in part two.